Hey, what's up everybody? So check this out. I just recently made a few changes here on my Veteran Lynx electric unicycle. I wanted to share with you what it is, the accessories that I've added on, why I've added them on, and my overall opinions thus far since making these changes on the wheel. So right off the bat, the first thing you can tell if you're familiar with this wheel is that I removed the jump pads or the toe pads that come pre-installed on the Lynx. Those are wonderful for off-road riding, taking jumps, but the majority of the type riding that I'm doing is either on the street as well as a less aggressive trail riding style. Maybe someday I'll get to the point where I'm able to take some good jumps on the wheel, but for now, I'm thoroughly enjoying the ride of this wheel just the way I'm utilizing it now. So by removing the jump pads, that allowed me a lot more surface area so that I could install whatever type of power pads I chose. And that happened to be the Clark Pad Titan Pads. And these have been a big winner. Now these weren't the first pads that I had on the wheel. I first installed some Grizzlas. Then I had the Power Knob Pads and ended up with the Clark Pads as my final choice for this wheel. All the different pad configurations that I used worked great. But these Clark Pads had the overall best feel for the type of riding that I'm doing on this wheel most of the time. It's a soft pad for comfort and it's larger, so it extends out quite a bit so that you can get better leverage. And I love the fact that it's a one-piece pad. One-piece pads are always gonna be better for adhesion locking onto the Velcro. And these can be customized as well. You can cut them in half and configure it the way you want, but I think it kind of defeats the purpose with this style of pad, honestly. So I give these pads a big thumbs up. They're working out great on the links. And the next upgrade that I did was I installed these pedal hangers from E-Rides, which brings the pedals down about an inch. And I went ahead and also purchased some of the Biggie pedals from E-Rides. These are the Noir, which is black, and this has got kind of a antique-ish texture to it, which I really like. And I also opted to get the red toe and heel lifts just to match the overall scheme of the wheel. Same thing with the Clark pads. The logo comes in a few different colors, so I got red there. And I've also got red on the handle of the seat here, which I'm gonna go over in a moment, but back to the pedals. When I installed the hanger and the E-Rides pedals together and went out for my first ride, which was just a few days ago, I was taken back by just how much better the ride feel was for my situation. Because I do wear riding boots, I feel like it's even more important that I have these spikes on the pedals to really give me some good grip the soles of motorcycle style boots don't always have deep grooves in the sole. And I just found that the stock Lynx pedals were lacking as far as giving me the grip that I was looking for. Right off the bat felt more secure. And with the pedals lowered a bit, it allowed my knee to have a little bit more contact towards the top of the wheel because I'm a taller guy. And that gave me much better control over the wheel. I immediately noticed a difference when accelerating, when taking turns, and when doing seated riding. And besides the functionality, I think it looks great as well. All right, so next I wanna talk about the seat, which is also an upgrade. This was a free upgrade that came with the purchase of my wheel from eWheels. It came a little bit after the wheel arrived and it's made by Badoo. The seat itself is very comfortable, it's plush. It's got some good height to it, which is nice, especially when you're transitioning into that seated riding position. And it's functional with the trolley handle as it easily lifts up so you can access the trolley handle right there. So if you didn't buy your wheel from eWheels, this would be a separate purchase for you to get this particular seat installed. So those are the upgrades. I've been running 35 PSI in my Kenda Nobby tire, and that gives me a really good ride feel. Although a little more air pressure could equate to maybe some faster reaction time and speed on the wheel, I don't feel that I need that and the added stability you get from a lower tire pressure, helping to negate wobbles is definitely worth it. I don't feel squishy at 30 pounds at all. It just feels right for me. So let's go take her out for a ride now and I'll share with you any other thoughts that might come to mind. So one of the great things about having this pedal lowering kit is that it makes it a lot easier to mount and take off on the wheel. Just that added inch is amazing. The difference it makes for mounting and dismounting.
just having myself a bit of a slower cruise today. We've got beautiful weather. Uh, there is a lot of traffic out on the streets today. It's not feeling all that great. So I'm just sticking to back roads, sticking to areas that aren't so congested at the moment. It's also the time of day. But I just want to remind you guys, when you do get a more powerful wheel like the Veteran Lynx, it doesn't mean you always got to push the wheel towards the threshold or towards the top end of what it's able to do. These are great cruiser wheels and just having that power on tap, ready to go at any time, to me equates to safety. I've said it before, it's definitely nice to have the power there and to take these wheels at higher speeds, but you don't need to. You can stick to that 20 mile an hour range, 20, 25, and have tons of fun while being a lot safer on the wheel. Now I'll admit, I like going fast, but I'm also a big fan of just monitoring the road conditions, what's going on around me, and making my judgment call based upon that. Like I said, we've got a lot of traffic going on today. I also noticed that for whatever reason, drivers are being very unaware around me because I went riding before I started this review. So I'm keeping it simple. So I'll show you a quick transition into the seated position. And the pads are not in the way. They're actually doing a pretty good job helping lock me in. Not locked in like the power knobs, which are my chosen pads for my ET Max. And by the way, those also work great on the links, especially if you're sticking to street riding, in my opinion. I know some people will have no issues using those pads off-road as well. But I just feel like each and every rider is going to be different. The ride feel they're looking for, the type of riding they're doing, there's a lot of different ways that you can dial in your wheel. Pads being one of the most obvious, but of course your pedal choice, and if you are lowering the pedals on something like a Lynx, it's going to make a big difference. Thank you. That was courteous. I like to take all the responsibility into my own hands for my own safety. And I've said it many times, practicing defensive riding techniques is the key to keeping you safe. And for me, what that means is I'm expecting every driver, every pedestrian, every cyclist, nobody sees me and everybody's going to always make the wrong move. You're always expecting that. By riding that way, you're able to avoid most, if not all, situations that could occur. So it would be nice if we lived in, you know, a perfect world where everybody was more aware of their surroundings. But until that day, I just want to encourage all you guys to play it safe, wear your gear, practice defensive riding, and just get in tune with your surroundings. If you head out on a ride on one particular day and you just notice traffic is especially heavy or people are just driving terrible on a particular day, Maybe take a different route or postpone your ride. I've done it several times. And always, always have yourself a horn with you like this. This electric horn has saved me from some of the ignorance on the road many times. And it's easy over a period of time, once you get more confident on your wheel, to start slacking on some of this stuff not taking it as serious because of your improved skill level. And I would just encourage you to continue to practice safety as best you can. But back to wheel customization and dialing it in for your particular needs and your riding style. This is so important. You know, you get your wheel out of the box and right off the bat, it's good to go. You can start learning and training on the wheel and you can get used to and adjusted to exactly the way the wheel comes right out of the box. With that being said, when you start to experiment with other things like pad placement type of pads that you're riding with, even gear, like if you're wearing boots or whatever the case may be, you may find that you're able to take your ride experience to a whole nother level and have so much more enjoyment and increase your safety margin as well.
Yeah, it's nice to just get back in the neighborhoods once in a while and cruise. And do some exploring. Some of these neighborhoods, I haven't been to the back ends of them. And so, like, I just figured out, hey, there's a solid wall right there. Didn't know that. I remember there being a field there many years ago. 